the word of the law is Philema. Who calls us Thelemites will do no wrong if he look but close into the word, for there are therein three grades, the hermit, and the lover, and the man of earth. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. O.T.O. was the first organization to adopt the law of Thelema as the basis for its moral and social teachings. Although the organization had existed in its earliest forms, previous to the Cairo revelation and to Aleister Crowley's involvement, it was originally developed by the German singer and intelligence agent Albert Karl Theodor Royce as a vehicle for teachings that he credited to the chemist and occultist Karl Kellner. Kellner himself had great wealth from the invention of the industrial process for making pulp paper. He had a passionate interest in yoga and other forms of esoteric study. He had received instruction from two Asian adepts and an Algerian Sufi. Kellner was an initiate of the mysterious Hermetic Brotherhood of Light, and also a close associate of the prominent theosophist Franz Hartmann, whose occultist ideas were important within the small circle that became O.T.O. The Freemason and music composer Henry Klein was also among these few founders. Theodore Royce had previously been one of the principal organizers of a revival of the Bavarian Illuminati. Kellner is supposed to have disapproved of this project, and it was only in 1902 when Royce split with his Illuminati collaborator, Leopold Engel, that Kellner agreed to authorize Royce to organize students of his teachings. These students were later called by Royce perfect Illuminati, and we now know them as initiates of the sanctuary of the Gnosis, or members of the ninth degree of O.T.O. These first brethren, admitted to the order's central secret, formed what they called an Academia Masonica. The idea was that this group would instruct Freemasons in esoteric doctrines, and impart to some of them a supreme secret later generally supposed to involve a technique of sexual magic. If they called this group O.T.O., it seems that they did so only privately until long after Kellner's death in 1905. Royce had started publishing a journal called the Oriflama in 1902. The title itself is the name of the Templar banner. As an organ of the Grand Lodge of Freemasonry for Germany, created in Paris, with Royce at its head, and claiming recognition and authorization from the Sovereign Sanctuary of the Rite of Memphis in the USA, and the Grand Lodge of the Swedenborgian Rite for Great Britain and Ireland. The first subordinate body of Royce's Masonic jurisdiction was Holy Grail Lodge and Temple No. 15, established in Berlin. In addition to the German Grand Lodge of Freemasonry, the early Oriflama promoted a form of esoteric Rosicrucianism, with organizational connections to the Societas Rosicruciana in Anglia. With the Swedenborgian Rite, which operated a version of the first three Masonic degrees, the Memphis Rite with its higher degrees, Royce was in a position not only to teach Masons, but to initiate aspirants into Masonry, particularly various high degrees not otherwise available in Germany. In addition, starting in 1902, he invited both already initiated individuals and already formed lodges to submit their affiliation and obedience to his Grand Lodge. By 1904, Royce had secured further patents, including one for the Cerno Scottish Rite. Authority for the Oriflamme was located in Berlin for Germany in the person of Royce, and in Manchester for Great Britain and England in the person of John Yarker. Yarker was a Masonic historian with a fascination for obscure and marginal rites, and he had supplied Royce with some of the latter's earliest Masonic patents. With the cooperation of Academia Masonica fellows Franz Hartmann and Heinrich Klein, 
Royce established a constitution for this consolidated Masonic front in 1906. In 1908, Royce attended an international conference of esoteric bodies in Paris, organized by Gerard Uncos, also known as Papou. This conference was the site for mutual recognition and patent swapping by organizers of a wide variety of rights and systems. As early as 1906, Royce had demonstrated an interest in internationally expanding his authority by chartering a subordinate Grand Lodge in Berlin to Rudolf Steiner, who was, at that time, the General Secretary of the Theosophical Society in Germany. At the Masonic and Spiritualist Conference in Paris, Royce entered into several agreements. To Ancos, he dispensed national authority for France in the Oriflamme system of masonry, and he also received from Ancos national authority for Germany in the Église Catholique Gnostique, which would later become the Gnostic Catholic Church in OTO. This may have been the point at which Royce received access to whatever Martinist credentials he later claimed for OTO, since Uncos was first and foremost the organizer of the lodge-based Martinist order. Royce also chartered Arnold Krum Heller as a personal representative to Latin America, and exchanged friendly recognition with Matthew McBlain Thompson, Thompson was the head of the American Masonic Federation, which appears in later issues of the Oriflama as a national body connected to Royce's orders. Thompson had emigrated from Scotland to the U.S. as a convert to Mormonism. He had been a Mason in Scotland, but arrived in Idaho to find that Mormons were excluded from Masonic bodies there. In his long quest for legitimacy, or at least a credible facade of legitimacy, for his Masonic efforts, Thompson took part in various interstate and international transactions involving other Masonic jurisdictions looking for ways to transcend provincial institutions according to the ideals of universal brotherhood. The later upshot of the story, however, is that Thompson and his American colleagues were convicted in federal court of mail fraud for operating a system of irregular Freemasonry. They were really using the Music Man system of Masonic organizing. They sold charters, diplomas, rituals, and regalia with only the most nominal gestures at actual initiation, got out of town, and left the locals to figure it out for themselves if they could. But it was during this earlier period when OTO was genuinely kept secret behind Royce's growing synthesis of Masonic, Rosicrucian, and Gnostic initiations that Alistair Crowley joined the order. He did so in the then-usual way, by affiliating at his existing Masonic rank, which was the 33rd degree of the Scottish Rite, equivalent to what became the 7th degree of the OTO system. In 1912, Royce initiated Crowley into three further degrees of OTO proper, that is, the 8th, ninth and tenth degrees, making him Grand Master of a new English section. At about this time, the Oriflama began to announce the ancient order of Oriental Templars, Ordo Templi Orientis, or OTO, as the summit of its initiatory system. Crowley promoted his Grand Lodge as a section of the international OTO, not a Masonic obedience as such, and in 1913 he wrote the Gnostic Mass to serve as the central public and private celebration of OTO. In the years leading into World War I, Crowley revised the English OTO degree rituals, or Mysteria Mystica Maxima, to put distance between them and regular Masonry, to calibrate their orientation to the supreme secret and to incorporate the law of Thelema as a central feature of OTO initiation. Since the theosophical boom of the late 19th century, women were working increasingly with men on equal footing in various esoteric groups, including the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. The early 20th century had seen co-masonry, developed both in connection with the Theosophical Society and otherwise to initiate women into Masonic degrees. 
and OTO also accepted women as members beginning with the section chartered to Rudolf Steiner in 1906. Although Royce had not himself appointed women to any conspicuous leadership roles in the order, Crowley was quick to do so. Italian-born Vittoria Kramers was the first Grand Treasurer General of the British section, and Australian Leila Waddell was its second Grand Secretary General. Royce spent World War I in Switzerland, operating an A-National Grand Lodge in the Bohemian and idealistic artists' community of Monte Verita. The war was very bad for OTO, which had been formed as an expression of idealistic internationalism, in the vein of the Theosophical Society, the International Olympic Committee, and the World's Columbian Exposition. All of these date from the same pre-war period and all suffered from the war. In 1917, with Crowley in the United States, the London authorities arrested OTO lodgemaster Mary Davies on a fortune-telling charge and confiscated the furniture, library, and records of the lodge. The real reason for these actions was understood by the members to be English fear of German subversive influence. In 1918, the Gnostic Mass was adopted by Royce as the official ceremony of the Gnostic Catholic Church within OTO, and published in German, just a year after its original publication in English in the United States. After the war, Crowley established a profess house of the order at Cefalu in Sicily, styling it as the Abbey of Thelema. In 1921, Crowley proclaimed himself Royce's successor and demanded Royce's abdication. Royce died in 1923, leaving no will or other written instrument regarding OTO succession. Crowley claimed to have received correspondence in which Royce appointed him his successor. In any case, the remaining active national heads recognized Crowley's succession to the headship of the order. Crowley was kicked out of Italy by Mussolini's government without explanation at the time, but evidently on charges of sexual perversion. The so-called Vita Conference in 1925 actually had OTO leaders meeting in Hohenlüben. It revealed tensions over Crowley's status as the prophet of Thelema and the contents of Thelemic teachings. Some of the senior German OTO initiates joined with Crowley's Anglophone supporters in OTO, while others split to form a separate body under Heinrich Trenker's pansophical banner. Development of OTO in North America had started during World War I with Crowley's students, Charles Stansfeld Jones and Wilfred T. Smith, organizing a lodge and a Rose Quaw chapter in British Columbia. In the 1930s, Smith collaborated with Jane Wolfe, who had been at the Abbey in Chefalu, to organize the OTO in the Los Angeles area. This group, Agape Lodge No. 2, later moved to Pasadena under the mastership of rocket scientist Jack Parsons. If World War I had been bad for OTO, World War II was even worse. Many countries banned Masonic-style organizations. Crowley's chief representative in Germany, Karl Germer, was imprisoned in a concentration camp because of his association with the order and its head. During the war, Crowley was visited by two members of the American military stationed in England, who had been initiated through Agape Lodge No. 2, Grady McMurtry and Frederick Mellinger. McMurtry had a good rapport with Crowley, who initiated him to the ninth degree, and they subsequently corresponded regarding the development of OTO. By the war's end, the Pasadena Lodge was the sole remaining OTO group in operation. Although Crowley continued other efforts, including, for example, issuing a charter to Gerald Gardner to organize a camp of Minervals, Crowley retired to Netherwood House in Hastings in 1945. Here, his visitors included the young Kenneth Grant, who joined OTO and served as Crowley's secretary. Crowley corresponded with Carl Germer in New York to prepare further writings for publication. 
and his will vested all of his material and intellectual property in OTO. So OTO is, among other things, the Crowley estate. Crowley died in 1947, succeeded by Germer as OHO, or Outer Head of the Order. Germer's headship of the order was recognized by all surviving initiates, but he did not assert it strongly, preferring to style himself as Grand Treasurer General. Germer chartered Grant to run an OTO camp in England, but Grant exceeded the authority assigned to him, and was expelled by Germer in 1955. Germer, assisted by Mellinger, also attempted to cultivate a new Swiss OTO, under the headship of a surviving Swiss member, Hermann Metzger. But Germer and Metzger were not able to maintain a working relationship. Advancement of existing members through the degrees continued under Germer. There was, however, a moratorium on new members. In 1959, McMurtry called a meeting of American initiates with the aim of pressuring Germer to permit new admissions but the meeting did not produce any real result. McMurtry moved thereafter to Washington, D.C. for professional reasons. He worked there as a political science professor and as a management consultant, and he lost touch with OTO in California. Germer died in 1962 without naming a successor. His will made his wife and Mellinger his executors. Later, in the 1960s, Metzger claimed to be OHO on the basis of an election conducted among Swiss members. He was denounced by Mellinger as a fraud. Later, he dropped identification of his group with OTO, and it persisted into the late 20th century as the Illuminati Order. In 1969, having been informed of Germer's death, McMurtry had enlisted and received the support of surviving U.S. initiates, including the ex-member and important Crowley disciple Israel Regardi and the Crowley disciple and archivist Gerald York. Initiations of new members then proceeded under McMurtry. The OTO Association was registered with the state of California by McMurtry in 1971, beginning the second and now enduring attempt to put OTO on a legal footing in the U.S after Smith's botched incorporation as the Church of Thelema in 1934. Germer's widow, Sasha, died in 1975. The next year, OTO was legally recognized as heir to the materials Sasha had in custody from Germer's estate. McMurtry declared the OTO Thelema Lodge of Berkeley to be the superordinate Grand Lodge in 1977. In 1978, OTO was made a non-profit California corporation with McMurtry, Bill Heydrich, and Jim Grabe as officers. A grandfathering procedure for prior memberships was undertaken. Eventually, a second corporation with McMurtry as its executive was also created as Ecclesia Gnostica Catholica. Meanwhile, Marcello Ramos Mota, a former Germer AA pupil, sued publisher Samuel Weiser, asserting his status as OHO. His suit failed. During the court proceedings, though, OTO, originally called as witnesses by Weiser, served Mota with another suit. The verdict of this second suit arrived in 1985 with McMurtry on his deathbed. Mota lost again, and the federal court affirmed OTO as a continuing entity with McMurtry as its head. Per McMurtry's instructions, his successor was chosen by a vote of the Ninth Degree members. The successor was, and is, editor and musician Hymenaeus Beta, an OTO member who had earlier been involved with Canadian Crowley publications coordinated with Kenneth Grant. Hymenaeus Beta dissolved the separate EGC corporation and reintegrated the church into OTO through the bylaws of the latter. 
He also distributed the administration of Grand Lodge across the U.S., rather than having it centered in the Berkeley Thalema Lodge. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, Hymenaeus Beta developed OTO in the U.S. on the Blue Equinox model, which is to say, in keeping with Crowley's published organizational plans for OTO government, most of which had never been implemented. In 1996, the existing OTO Corporation was designated as OTO International Headquarters, and our current United States Grand Lodge was constituted and incorporated to govern the order as a national section in the U.S., with Grand Master Sabazius as its supreme and holy king. In 2005, United Kingdom Grand Lodge was constituted, incorporated, and installed under the Grand Master Hyperion, just 93 years after Crowley's own appointment as the first British Grand Master. In 2006, OTO Australia was established under Grand Master Shiva, and in 2014, two more national Grand Lodges were created, finally outside of the Anglosphere, La Gran Logia Italiana dell'Ordo Templi Orientis, under Grand Master Fanes, and the Croatian Grand Lodge, under Grand Master Abrasox. The five national sections, and their supreme and holy kings, represent a constitutional milestone. It was Hymenaeus Beta's mission to establish at least five working Grand Lodges. Until that was done, he had been subject to potential recall by the members of the Sanctuary of the Gnosis. Now, he can only be removed by a unanimous decision of the Grand Masters. The existence of multiple Grand Lodges in the 21st century has made OTO more organizationally diverse. OTO continues in dozens of countries worldwide to initiate men and women, to administer sacramental rites, to supply education in esoteric traditions, to authorize publications of the works of Aleister Crowley, and to pursue the establishment and extension of the law of Thelema. Love is the law, love under will.